So, Berto, why do people love Snape, Severus Snape? Why do they... He's supposed to be kind of a, a secondary character, and at times he's almost like a villain. But for many people, Severus Snape is their favorite character from the Harry Potter uh, books and the movies. Whoa, 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 bleed to lover. Why do it's, people... Um, it's because he is the ultimate tragic character and yet initially we all felt he was the a very good villain and yeah it's just like there's so many good archetypes wrapped up and and demonstrated via that character he's also um i think the, the as it was portrayed in the movies was done so well by rickman and so i think the people that read the books uh probably felt like myself felt fell in love with uh, the complexity of that character and just how much we didn't like him and then how much we grew to understand the all the things we didn't understand. And then the people that saw the movies probably loved the, also the performance that, that he gave. And yeah, it's it's great. I love it. Yeah, it's interesting. People love Vader and Kylo and and, yeah. and Loki and Ramsey Bolton and yeah. Theon Greyjoy and Hannibal Lecter, Patrick Bateman. But in all those examples... All those were real monsters. Yeah. And and Snape defies those expectations. Right. And I think that we love these characters, or some people do, because they hold a lot of power. You know, all these characters yeah. have tremendous power. They almost yeah. seem untouchable. And Snape had a lot of power. Yeah. And also, at some point, they give off a vibe or it's revealed that they've been bullied as children. Yeah. They're very misunderstood. And they they tend school shooters. They don't need people. They I don't need people. I'm not here to make friends. That kind of thing. And so I think that uh, it is a an attractive persona that we would that some people wish they could adopt. You know, yeah. to to be powerful, to get revenge on people who don't understand us, yeah. and to not need anyone around. You know. And by the way, initially, uh, by the way, spoiler alert and all these things. Um, but initially, he was a very good. Uh, way for us to have something to root against without fully showing all our cards. Yeah. You know, I looked up some Snape memes online and there's one where a bunch of Alan Rickman's are on a plane and they say Snape's on a plane. <laughs> and then another one where uh, Snape is looking kind of sad and they're, and he's or he's angry and he's like, stop whining. You know nothing about the friend zone. <laughs> So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the psychology of Severus Snape. What do you say, Berto? Let's do it. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. Who are you, Berto? My name is Humberto Castaneda, and I own a small apothecary shop in downtown Seattle. So a little caveat at the beginning, as I always say whenever we go into stuff like this, is there are super nerds, Harry Potter nerds out there, and there are, you know... Sev seven books with lots of words in it and lots of details, mm -hmm. and we we might get some of those things wrong. And it, if, as I always say, if you come to a psychology podcast to get your definitive details on Harry Potter, there's something wrong with you. And uh, uh, you know, so don't worry if we get a couple things wrong. That's not the point. The point is is for us to chat about this and also to provide some analysis on the character and maybe, yeah. maybe help people understand how people can uh, end up in situations like this. Yeah. You know? Look, it's, it's ultimately about also remembering fondly the memory of Cerberus Snape. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, so Berto, what's your experience with these books? Like what, how did you grow up with these? Well, that's a great thing. So at the time I was, uh, I had a different job back then. I was uh, cleaning and detailing, expensive automobiles and my boss came to me and said hey we may need to do a deal with uh jk rowling and her people because uh these books uh, these this series uh for kids is doing really well and at the time we would license uh famous things to put on our cars like decals and so i thought okay so i was given the first three books to read as homework assignment by my boss and i took them home and I looked at these books and I did not want to read them because the covers looked so childish. So they, you, hadn't, you hadn't heard of them before? I hadn't heard of it. And I looked at it and it's like this little awkward kid in a broom with glasses flying around. 
And I don't know if you remember the art of the original books, but it wasn't that inspiring. It was sort yeah. of like clunky, well, you know? Yeah, yeah, the, the art for all seven books were by the same... Yeah, but but I felt like once I got to love it, I, I but when I first saw it, I was like, okay, I don't like this. Well, it made it look like a very second-rate child's book. Yeah, totally. So I was totally against it, but I sort of had no choice. So I sat down and I read that first book. <laughs> And I was hooked, man. Then I couldn't stop. I read the second one. By the time, by when I started, only the first three had been out. So that's why I had those three. I read the first one, the second one, and the third one, like back to back. I was so en- engrossed in them. And because I read up, them. Did you end up doing work with them? No, unfortunately, we didn't. But it was that was the research we were doing that we would potentially have led to putting decals on Rolls Royces. But anyways, I, uh, I loved the books and I love those first three books so much because I read them right one after it's like binge watching on Netflix or something so I knew all the little details and I saw the little recalls from book two and book three that that harkened back to things she laid down in book one and, and you're not so a, excited and you're not it. a big book reader well not anymore when I was a kid I read a lot more and nowadays I read a lot of graphic novels yeah uh, and then what and then so then I every time a new book was coming out I was uh, right there waiting in line, getting my book. I didn't get them signed or anything, but I was always trying to get the book right away and I would often stay up all night. So you would have been in like your mid-20s and up to your 30s reading That's embarrassing books. to admit, but uh, I was certainly not a two-year-old. Well, I, I think I think a, a lot of people were, uh, you know, uh, of adult age who liked it. Uh, and you really liked the books. I really liked the books, and you, uh, not, really, and you really liked the movies. Yes. Now, I didn't. I didn't like the books evenly. I felt, to me, the best books were three, um, and six and seven. Like those were the best. Uh, but but I also I also liked some things about four, and then one and two, especially one. One for me has a lot of problems, but at the same time, it laid out the universe, and so it was so good. When the movie started coming out, oh my gosh. Especially that first movie. Like, I actually, I remember feeling mixed feelings about the first movie, but I rewatched it recently, and Columbus got so much right with that movie. Yeah, totally. Oh, my God. Well, the, the first book, I remember when I, when I was reading it, I remember thinking, man, this would be a great movie. Yeah. It's almost like rolling or rowling. Rowling. Rowling, it's almost like she knew it was going to be made into a movie because the the books are written in a screenplay kind of way. So much so that when I saw the first movie, I was like, well, yeah, of course that's what it looks like. Yeah, Everything looked exactly the way I had it in my head, Incredible. except for Harry Potter himself. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I actually, uh, what was different about Harry Potter? The, the, the real Harry Potter... In my head, the Harry Potter I had in my head looked like the guy in the front of the book. Oh, a little nerdier. Uh, yeah, thinner and bushier hair. Yeah. The, if you look at uh, Radcliffe's hair it, yeah. throughout the seven movies, it's like every movie they were tried because his hair changed yeah. drastically. And there was one hair where it was like puffy out on the sides. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like they kept trying to make it right and yeah. it never looked right. His hair looked ri- <laughs> ridiculous in every... Hermione was spot on. But they changed their hair a lot, too. But but it was always within the realm of my imagination. Yeah. Ron Weasley, sp- Perfect. spot yeah. on. McGonagall, spot on. You yeah. know, everyone was like exactly how I imagined them to be. Dumbledore was a little... Le- I, in my head, Dumbledore was much more epic i guess well i felt that the first dumbledore was like that yeah but then unfortunately not the what's his name ed or something like the the new dumbledore great actor and he he really did pull it off yeah but that first one was well he he perfect. died right? he died yeah yeah, yeah. He died. yeah so my experience was that i was doing in-home therapy richard. richard i was doing in-home therapy for in the late 90s i i just become a therapist yeah. I'm 26, 27, 28, and the books came out when I was around that age. And I remember, and I would do in-home therapy, and yeah. I would I would go into the rooms of these kids, and they all had this book oh. called Harry Potter. That's how you saw the, the yeah. pattern. Yeah. And, and they all loved it, and, yeah. they, and all the kids talked about it. It was a phenomenon among <laughs> children, you know, as each book came out. And 
And I remember thinking, oh, it must, you know, but I've heard about a lot of books like that, like um, what's the Goosebumps and like Anna, Animorphs or right. something. There, there's always been some kind of kid book that's been popular, but, and I, it never occurred to me that I would read them, you know, right, it's, it's like, right. oh, well, and especially when you look at the cover, it's like, oh, oh, the, well, it's great that kids are reading. And I, I remember thinking that, I remember thinking like, oh, it's great. <laughs> it's great that some book is appealing to kids and blah, blah, blah. But I would never read it. It's just great that it's... Yeah. Yeah. And then my mom ha- talked about it, and she had them all on cassette, because this is before CDs. Uh, I mean, it was during the time when CDs were around, but CDs were kind of new, actually. <laughs> and well, for whatever... New? <laughs> this well, was like late eight, late 90s. Yeah, 10, <laughs> 10 years old. I mean, my first, the first CD I got was like the first CD I bought was probably like 91. Like I was still yeah. buying records and cassettes up okay. until... And it was your mom, so I, I could see why. Well, and people didn't have CD players in their car. Oh, that's because, true. Because yeah. they didn't have CD players that didn't skip. That's, that's true. Yeah. And so everyone still... Ha- and plus, everyone still had their old stereos with cassettes. And so you mainly listen to right. audiobooks and cars. That's, that's true. Yeah. And so so she had she had all she had all four of the first the four first four books on cassette. Wow. And it was like several cassettes, you know, like like, <laughs> I can like twenty cassettes or something. <laughs> and and I just said, hey, could I maybe you know borrow that because I I'm I, I was getting into audiobooks and so I borrowed the first one. And the actor who reads it is just fantastic. Oh. You know that the the way he reads it and 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 that first book is just so great and so great on audio too because it's just sure. so easy to follow and and the story and the world building and everything was just so amazing and so i listened to all four books like straight nah. on cassette in the span of like a couple months amazing in in my acura that literally had 300,000 miles on it um <laughs> <laughs> and and because you know there weren't podcasts back then, no. So so it was either like NPR or that. So so that that was my experience. So um, yeah, uh, for me, and then eventually, as each as each book came out, I, I would listen to the audiobook. I I, and I never actually read the books, but yeah, but, I, but listening is equivalent because you you got the extended story, not just the movie. But I think one of the problems with audiobook is that. With more complicated stories, is as the books, you know, as four, five, six, seven, it gets a little bit more complicated. Oh, there's more characters, yep. there's more things to follow. And I got lost. Well, I think, oh, and you can't quickly rewind right. the pages, and yeah, right, yeah. So, whereas book one through three are so simple that you don't right. really, it's you can listen. That's a that's a really good point because if you have all the books at your disposal, you can like, wait, where did I first read about? You could go book back to book three, look at the chapter in question. Yeah, with audio, especially with tapes. <laughs> yeah, there's it's just not convenient. You can't do that now. It. I I loved book one. I loved book three. Uh, book two was like not great. Book four was entertaining, and then after that, I lost interest for the most part. Now, in researching for this episode, I have a new appreciation for Harry Potter because I finally understand the story. <laughs> because like I would I would I listen to the books on yeah. audio, and then I would go to the movies. But there's a lot of characters, you know? Yeah. Every book introduces like brand new people yep. and, and new ideas. Like the Horcruxes didn't show up till late. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and I'll say uh, book five and movie five for me um, were, that to me was a little bit of a low point because it, it did get quite convoluted. Yeah. It, it had a lot less fluidity in the, in the storytelling. This is how I experienced it anyways. Whereas I felt that, like, to me, book three and movie three were great. Like, were just really strong. Yeah. And I felt that book six, book six, oh, my God. So, and then, of course, the, 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 the finale. But, yeah, book five. And so if you're trying to slog your way through and you hit book five, it, it's sort of, and I, oh, I can only imagine with audio, it'd be even harder because it's so many names, so many new concepts, like you're saying. Yeah. And and yet you're still not given the picture to give you the context of why all this is being introduced in the first place. So a lot of stuff is being disrupted from this pattern you had gotten sort of used to. 
it, it definitely starts in book four where all of a sudden they got the Goblet of Fire, you got a new thing. So it's already like, oh, it's not a normal year anymore. But then five, everything really starts falling apart. Yeah. Yeah. And it also bothered me that she had to follow a certain format for every book, right? Yeah. She she had to follow a school year. Yeah. And she had to have certain themes, like yeah. Snape's always a dick to Harry, yeah. and Draco Malfoy and Harry always have a fight. Yeah. And, um, you know, Hermione is always doing this, yeah. and everyone always hates Harry, even though he fucking it's, saves... It's, it's Jack Bauer. <laughs> yeah, even though at the end of every book, he literally saves the universe. Yeah, yeah. And, and yet... Start right back up next year. Everyone hates him. Petunia hates him. Like yes. it just, it, it just, I get it, you know, because it's a, it's a children's book. Yeah. You, you have to follow the format. Yes. You can't like, and that's what kids yes. want. And and that is in fact what, what made it feel familiar because you remember that was the school year when I was when we were growing up, right? The school year would start the same way every year, and you'd sort of start a little bit of a stranger, even if you had a little few yeah. friends. And the year would progress. And at the end of the year, you'd have resolved the year and you'd go into summer break. Yeah. And the next summer, uh, fall, it would all start over. <laughs> yeah. And now, a, a, upon doing research for this episode, I, I have a new appreciation for it, but just a couple other neg- negatives. And I think most of it is because I didn't really pay attention closely as I was listening to the books. Sure. So one of the things that... And, and a lot of the negatives came out for me. For example, in most of the books... There would be all these wacky mysteries, and then at the very end, Dumbledore would come in and explain the whole thing. <laughs> and and sometimes and a lot of times the explanation just didn't feel right, except for books one and three. The the, the explanations at the end of one and three actually felt like oh Patronus and the and Hermione had the the time travel thing. Like it all makes sense. Yeah, I agree on three, on one, even though I I love it. Um, yeah, the traps they set. Yeah. And then they perfectly made sure that Harry and Hermione and Ron had just the right combination of skills to get through the traps. Yeah, and it was such a weird thing, like... A uh, chess game. Well, that um, uh, Voldemort is on the backside of Quirrell's head? Yeah. Like, what? Like, it's so weird, <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. anyway, um, so it's like a Scooby-Doo episode, yes. right? Um, the other... The, the yes, other that, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, uh, the other... Um, <laughs> A negative was the lack of diversity, which is very apparent when you actually <laughs> look at the situation today. But I actually looked up the demographics of England and of Britain, and it is vast majority white people. Yeah, although the, the I mean the books did have, and then the movies at it like they had uh, they had uh, Hindi people and. Um, a couple of black people. But well, they had right, Cho was, Chang, who yeah, I, I have well, mixed feelings about. On, on one hand, it's like, oh, you know, an, an Asian love interest yeah. who wasn't like just there because she was Asian, yeah. like she was she was Scottish yeah. or whatever. And but on the other hand, it's like Cho Chang, like that's not even a name. That's that's like that's two last names. That, you know, it's like <laughs> it's like calling someone. You know, Castaneda, Castaneda. Yeah, Castaneda Hernandez or something. You know, it's like how more stereotypical. Hey, man, you but, laugh, but whenever I, I give my first name, people are like, is that your first name? <laughs> but at the same time, you have like uh, all these very strange names. Everyone, you know, Dum- Dumbledore, Dumbledore and Severus yeah. Snape, like everyone has that's, a funny that's name. That's fair. So, you know, but anyway. Uh, Albus. Yeah. Albus Dumbledore. So, so, but I will say, that doing research for this episode, I'm like, I kind of want to go back and read the books again because yeah. I think I was so lost that I couldn't enjoy some of the like severe emotional swings yeah. that it's particularly Snape's story takes, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah, I think you owe a big can of apologies to Miss uh, Rowling or Rowling or whatever. Yeah. So let's talk about J.K. Rowling, English writer. Uh, Harry Potter, the series, is the best-selling book series in all of all time. <laughs> wow. Uh, she produced the films. Uh, she's apparently a rags-to-riches story. She was almost homeless or was homeless or yeah. something, and and then then she became a billionaire. I, I, isn't she, other than the queen, the richest woman in England? No, uh, but she's in the top, you know, 
group of or or women. I don't know. I think she is. Well, she's the first billionaire author, okay. which is interesting. But she gave away much of her money to charity, which is nice. And she also said that Snape was one of the most important characters in the books. Yep. Um, portrayed by Alan Rickman. Uh, what movies can you name of Alec, Al, Alan Rickman? Uh, Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, that's his first. Hans Gruber. Um, uh, Love Actually. Yeah. Um, Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest, yes. Sense and Sensibility. Right. Uh, Dogma. Oh, of course. I've been re-watching clips on YouTube of Dogma. Yeah. It's a good movie. It's got a lot of good stuff to it. Yeah. Uh, Robin Hood, the one with oh, Kevin, yes. Kevin Costner. Like, but why a spoon? Because it hurts more. <laughs> Uh, a little bit about his personal life is he met a woman when he was 19 and was with her his entire life. Wow. He died in 2015. F- he suffered from a minor stroke, oh, which, which, led, which led to the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Ugh. Uh, or he, no, sorry, he died in 16, at the age of 69. All right, Severus Snape, let's get into it. Now, his story is given to us bits and pieces throughout yeah. the seven books. And most of his story is given in the final, like, few chapters of the final book. Yeah. Which is just like what I was talking about in terms of the, right. sc- the Scooby-Doo thing. Yeah. But, and it, and it's, but um, it kind of pays off. Well, and it, it has to be like that. Right. Because yeah. the whole th- conceit is, like, is Snape good? Is he bad? Yeah. Harry, we're, we're in Harry's shoes. That's and right. Harry is like, you know, is Snape good? Is Snape bad? Yeah. And... You know, Harry has arguments with people. They're like, you got to trust Dumbledore. If Dumbledore yeah. trusts Snape, then you got to. And he's like, but you don't understand the things I've seen. Right. And like, and they're like, you're, you're blinded by your hate, you know, and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And it's, it's, a, it's, so I get it. Yeah. But if and they, they gave, laid it all out, then it would have ruined it. Right. And they gave plausible deniability all along because there were, there were clearly things he did early on to save Harry or to prevent, but then they're like, well, yeah, he was paying back a debt, you know, he was, or, uh, they were always, you know, he respects Dumbledore too much or any number of, okay, okay, I see why. And, and so they always, she always left the door open for, for the, but is he really, where's his real alliance, right. allegiance, sorry. And then, and then when in, uh, when they, he does the unbreakable vow yeah. with Bellatrix, yeah, I remember reading that and being like, wait a minute, unless they're lying to me in the description of what an unbreakable vow is, he's he's got no out. So either this means he's really evil or what is he doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah, right. And I, 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 that was such a good scene to write in because it puts the reader up to a decision. Now what? Because, you know, the whole time you could be, especially with poorly written storylines that try to do this, you'd be like, well, yeah, but there was this one scene where clearly you gave it away. Here, it's like, it's sort of impossible as a reader to not be like, wait a minute, I thought I knew what was up. Because I remember at that moment, I still thought, no, Snape is good, Snape is good, Snape. And then I was like, wait, what? Yeah. How are they going to get out of this? Right. And you could make a case. Yeah. So, well, we'll get into it. So, I looked into his history uh, from the books, not from the movies. And at some point, we learned that his parents might have fought quite a bit. Did you? Do you remember reading about that? I don't remember reading that his parents fought, but it, it might make sense since he was a, a half blood and his dad was a muggle. And his, his his father apparently was not a nice guy. He did not like his father. No. Yeah, his father was mean and critical. And while he was a kid living in the Muggle world, it's like yeah, there's a, uh, there's not much my father liked or something along this line. Right, right. So uh, we don't know much, but it sounds like things weren't so great. And as a kid, he uh, we he, we see him. He's trying to make this is all like through the pensive and all that. Yeah, kind of stuff. Harry is re- Harry is seeing the memories of what Snape's past was. Snape doesn't tell Harry directly at this, but. Yeah, Dumbledore's giving him uh, insight, right? Or he took the tears of, of, of Snape in the. Oh end. right, right, right. Yeah, that there was that too. Yeah. Snape was you know, as a kid was awkward. He was kind of nerdy, and he uh, didn't really understand how to make friends. But he tries to make friends, and it doesn't really work. Be- oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Part of it is when he's training uh, in Occlumency and Legolamency. Le- Le- yeah. Le- 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 is that remember he accidentally 
or you know he gets into Snape's head. Yeah. And then at uh, one point, while Snape's not there, he goes into the pensive and all these things. Yeah. And and he gets in trouble for it. But right. Uh, yeah, that was part of it too. Anyways, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So as a kid, he is rejected by other Muggle people and called a freak. But then Harry's mother, Lily, is nice to him. And it seems that Lily is his only friend. And so as a kid, you're Snape, Severus, yeah. and your parents are fighting, your dad's critical, you're, you're a mudblood yeah. yourself, you're awkward, everyone hates you, you're being bullied, rejected by people, and then there's this one girl yeah. who is also a, a mud mudblood yeah. and who is... Um, you know, it's funny. I never knew if it was mud blood or mug blood because because <laughs> the because I never read it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you didn't know how they were pronounced. Yeah, but but the way he pronounced <laughs> it in the in the in the in the audio books, I could never really because he's a mug blood. Like he, the way he said anyway. Uh, but I read it today. It's it's was mud Lily blood. Potter a mud blood or was she a, a full? I think no, no. I I think I, isn't it that she. Her parents were neither of them were were witch, wizards or witches, but she had magic. Oh, I don't know. And because I thought Harry's dad was was magic, like was a. Uh, sorry, yeah, I thought she was a Muggle and his dad was, but maybe I'm not remembering this right. All I know is that his her sister Petunia Petunia was not magical, right? And really hated and resented, right. Uh, uh, What's her uh, name? Lily. Lily. Right. There was a whole Lily Petunia Severus issue yeah. that was going on, which sort of set up Petunia resenting Lily yeah. and then raising Harry in a shitty way. Right. Um, so then they go to Hogwarts to learn, you know, the ways of magic as kids, and they continue to be friends. And Lily is put in Gryffindor with James, yep. uh, with James Potter, and Severus is put in Slytherin. And and then this is when Snape is sort of sad because he's like, oh, I my one friend. Yeah. And and Lily is not really. She doesn't care that much because she is more. She has. She's more popular and yeah. stuff. And she and he already doesn't like uh, James because he had already been teasing him. Like James was a bully on the. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, James was an asshole. Yeah. Exactly. Like Harry Potter's dad was a true, yes. <laughs> true sadistic, s sadist, yeah, bully asshole. Like they, they do not right. I mean, they, they don't. Yeah. They don't paint James in a positive way at all. They do this weird thing where they say, "Well, by the such and such seventh year or whatever, he had started maturing or whatever." But they didn't. I, I didn't feel they really sold his how he could come back from being such a jerk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, it wasn't like one instance. He yeah. he was he he bullied Snape for years. Yeah, him and Sirius, the little gang there, he, the Marauders. Yeah, yeah, him and Sirius Black and, and, and Lupin. Remus uh, and Pettigrew. Were basically like Malfoy and, yeah. and Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Yeah, which you know? was the poetic you know, beauty of it. But at the same time, that was one flaw... If I I don't know I actually I don't remember how it was in the books maybe in the books it was better but from what I remember now in the movies that was one flaw I felt was that they showed how bad he was and yet they didn't sell me on but well then why did she end up with him because he well well I'll get know, into that in a second but but they but in the end uh, again at researching this topic I you know from from the books. They don't actually redeem him at all. That's I, what I'm saying. Yeah, they yeah. they don't they don't and, and they don't explain why Lily would be with I, him. They said something like, you know, he he matured later and he did technically save Snape's life. So it, it makes total like sense that. why Snape was such a busted up person because yeah. the one person who yeah. had been for years. So you have your you have your best friend. Yep. So so Lily is friends with Snape throughout Hogwarts time, yeah. you know, from the, from the time they enter at age 10 or 11. Always. Through, yeah, through, for several years. And so, so Snape, his only friend is Lily. Yeah. And he's in love with her. Yeah. In, infatuated in love. It's L his life. Lily, meanwhile, has other friends. Yeah. Um, but Lily really likes Snape, you know? And Snape is trying his hardest at online dating and failing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, meanwhile, James and his and his other bullies 
are tormenting him, yep. uh, humiliating him in front of people, yep. hanging up um, upside down to show his underwear, yeah. making fun, and then and then the the and then this one thing happens where uh, James is you know doing this thing to to Snape, and then Snape doesn't um, uh, know what to do. And and well, Lily kind of gets a little smirk, like she gets a little. She's Lily's trying to defend Snape. She's yeah. like, James, back off. And then something kind of funny happens, and then Lily gets a little kick out of it. But then she tries to defend Snape. Yeah, like basically what what happens is they're they're torturing him. He Snape gets really pissed, and to defend himself, he uses his spell that he created that can slash, and so he slashes at uh, at Potter and actually cuts him a bit. And that's when Potter cast the spell to hang him up and upside down and then everyone sees his his dirty gray underwear or whatever and lily against her better judgment smirks but then kind of stops smirking as soon as she starts but he sees this and this is like betrayal yeah ultimate. and then and he attacks her calls her a mudblood yeah and then she kind of like, fine i'm not gonna the, defend you so be, so imagine that you're lily and you're you're you're, you know, this guy who you know has a crush on you for years uh, is being completely bullied and lashes out at you, kind of. Yes. And then you're just like, fuck that guy. Yeah. And not only fuck Snape, like, screw him, I'm not going to... She completely rejects him. Yeah. Snape goes to her, begs her to be friends again. He, she's like, no. Nope, too late. Too late. And you're sort of involved with this dark arts people, like, right. so I don't really like you. Yeah, that's the one thing. Snape was not doing himself any favors with that. <laughs> yeah, but still, like, so, but imagine you're Snape, you know, again, yeah. you're attracted to dark arts because... The cool kids are not attracted to the dark arts, and you're looking for some power in the you world. You want to belong. You want to belong, and you also are looking for some power to like strike back at this guy who physically manhandles you with his fucking wand every right. now and then. And you have your grandfather's broken helmet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you know learning kung fu or something. Yes. To, you know to defend yourself. And so, and then one day you you lash out at Lily while you're being hung upside down upside down with your underwear showing, and she just completely just drops you like a sack of potatoes. Yeah. Not only that, but then she she marries that guy. Yes. She for <laughs> years is witnessing this bully being an asshole. Yes. And then. And they and they both talk, you know, Lily and Snape would talk shit about James and be like, oh, yeah, he's a, she, a she called him a, a, a toe rag. She called him a toe rag. Uh -huh. And then lo and behold there. And so <laughs> imagine, so that's the beginning of Snape's psychology. Right. You have a dad who's super critical, parents who are fighting, society that hates you. You finally go to a place where wizards, you finally feel like you're accepted St you're still being bullied. Right. You have this one girl who who pays it, who's nice to you. You're you're in love with her. She's beautiful. She's nice, and she's strong. And then one bad bullying incident, you lash out at her. She drops you. You beg her to come back. She won't, and she marries your enemy. Yeah, that's got to screw you up. Yeah, that's got to give you a complex. Absolutely. Okay, so let's take a break, and then we'll go into his adulthood. What do you say, bro? Yep. All right, we're back from the break. If you haven't become a patron of the podcast, do so now. Go to patreon.com, become a patron of the podcast. When you become a patron of the podcast, you get access to all of our premium episodes that are only available to patrons of the podcast. You also don't have to listen to ads for the most part. All right, let's get back into this, Birdo. So you should add yourself as a patron. So Snape is now an adult, and he's got a lot of baggage. He's got dad baggage. He's got Lily baggage. He's got James baggage. He's got society baggage. Yeah. <laughs> um, Voldemort yeah. baggage. V Voldemort baggage. Um, so he is, uh, he becomes a Death Eater under Voldemort as an adult. By the way, do you know that his Bogart, I just found this out today because I was also reading up, um, his Bogart is Voldemort. What does that Meaning mean? Meaning the Bogart is the thing, uh, do you remember where they had the closet in the second movie, uh, sorry, in the, um, in the third movie, it, yeah, uh, where they open the closet and this Bogart takes the shape of the thing you're most afraid of. Oh. And like for, for uh, Neville, it was Snape. And for Harry, it was um, 
it was uh, a, a Dementor, and uh, and so forth. For for Lupin, it was the Moon, right? Well, they don't show us this, but I, so I don't know wh- how we found out, or maybe it's somewhere. But it sounds like for Snape, it's Voldemort. It's for Snape. It's Voldemort. Yes, yeah, so that's the thing he's most afraid of. Why would he be afraid of Voldemort? Well, because it, it's think about it this way: for the entire time we know Snape, he is having to play double and then triple agent. Oh, and occluding his thoughts from Voldemort at all times. So you're sort of skipping forward in the story. Like yeah. I'm talking, to, he just enters adulthood. So yeah, no, but I'm I'm saying that like uh, at this time, Voldemort had already been a thing, right? So. Um, so Vold- Voldemort, eaters. Voldemort has been around a long time, correct? Yes. So he's sort of like hundreds of years old or something. Yeah, and so well, not hundreds because Dumbledore. He was a kid when Dumbledore was younger. Oh, okay. But but the point is that his the main thing had already happened, so that's why they had Death Eaters, right? Like that was there was already a cult of Voldemort, right? So he was already developing this obsession with that stuff. Voldemort? Uh, Snape was. So explain to me, was so Snape is an adult, yeah. and he wants to become a Death Eater. Yeah. Is Voldemort alive at this point? Yeah, because he's and gaining he, power. And Voldemort, has he ever died at this point? No. He's never died. No, because remember, he dies when he tries yeah. to kill Harry. Yeah. Right. So so he's just sort of living his first life. Yes. As an and older... gaining power. He, and he's gaining power. Yeah. Okay. And he is older than... Snape in them because he already, he already went through school before that. But he's not as old as Dumbledore. He's not as old as Dumbledore. So he's probably like fifty or something. Yeah, I don't know. Forty or something. I forgot. Okay. I lost track of the. Um, time. Okay, so Voldemort tells Snape to go to Hogwarts and spy on Dumbledore. So that's why uh, Snape becomes a teacher at Hogwarts. He wouldn't have done that normally. Yeah. Why would he want to go back to the place that he was bullied so often? Right. Right. But he goes back and he tries to become the dark arts person. He's rejected and he becomes the potion master. Perhaps Dumbledore knew about something. Like I wonder if it's like Yoda with, or, you know, like the, like I sense some darkness in you. So, <laughs> yeah, right. Because it seems like Dumbledore would have detected something was up with Snape, right. you know? Um, and Snape learns the prophecy about Harry and, or about Longbottom coming to, destroy Voldemort and he tells Voldemort about the prophecy which causes Voldemort to figure out who it was and Voldemort goes oh it must be must be Lily Potter's kid yeah and then Voldemort is like okay Snape thank you I'm gonna go kill Lily Potter and yeah. her and her family now and 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 Snape is like holy crap what no, like the, save Lily <laughs> right the prophet I, I you know I'm trying to serve you as the yeah. my master I tell you this prophecy I had no idea it was going to be about Lily Potter, right. like the one person on this planet that I actually like, you right. know? And he begs Voldemort to not do it. Right. And Voldemort's like, don't be stupid. You know, I'm going to, of course I'm going to do it. This, this, this kid is going to kill me or, you know, you know, the, the prophecy, blah, blah, blah. So Snape is in this decision right now. Yep. Snape is like, well... I could co- I, I could become full evil right now and just be like, well, I guess that's the way it's going to be. the breaks. And, you know, but... And he would have, except for one person. <laughs> what? Lily. <laughs> like, right. If it was just uh, Potter or the son, the child, he would have. Right. It's so it's interesting to look at Rowling's story in these, like, moments, right? Yeah. Like, what if, you know, what if Snape had just let go and just yeah. said, okay, fine, I guess that's what's going to happen. This whole story would have gone a different way, right? Yep. In all likelihood, right? Uh, Dumbledore would have, or uh, Voldemort would have ruled the world. Potentially. I mean, what, what, was that Voldemort's mission? Was at least the wizarding world, right? Yeah, I mean, he, he wants irrational power and to live forever, okay. right? And so he he's basically like, he, what he appreciates the most is the power itself and he has no understanding of love so he wants to live forever so part of it is like you know making sure that he can do all sorts of dark magic so he can live forever and then the other one is consolidating his power and having everyone be subservient to him so if there's a prophecy that says that something or someone's going to take him down you could bet he would stop at nothing to 
undo that prophecy. <laughs> so now Snape is in a conundrum because he's begged with Voldemort. He's not going to change his mind. Yeah. And Snape can't s- stand up to Voldemort because yeah. Voldemort's too powerful. And this is what I, you know, the, he fears Voldemort o- above anything else. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, what does he do? Well, he does something that he never would have done in another situation. He goes to Dumbledore yeah. and he's, you know, he says, please save, uh, save Lily. And this is the beginning of his double agency. Right. He, he, when he first went to Dumbledore, he was an agent. He was an agent. Now he's a double agent. Well, and then Dumbledore <laughs> says, "Okay, fine. I'll I'll do what I can to to yeah. fix the situation, but um w- what are you willing to do for it?" And yeah. And uh, Snape is like he's like, "I'll do anything. Yeah. I'll do anything. I'll I'll be your slave. I'll I'll die. I'll do anything you want me to. Yeah. I just want Lily to live because he's in love with her." After all this time, always. And so Dumbledore says, okay, fine, I will do what I can, but you will be a double agent now. Yeah. You're going to work under Voldemort. Secret agent Snape. So then Voldemort arrives at the house. Now, this is where maybe you can fill me in because I don't really get it. What did Dumbledore do to protect Lily at this so point? So he was hiding. He was. Um, they formed a little network of people, and they were like hiding the location of where where they were and all these things. It's just that Peter Pettigrew betrayed them. Oh. So Dumbledore did try, but unfortunately, they didn't realize that one of their best friends was going to betray them. Okay. So Voldemort figures it out. Arrives at the house of Harry Potter and his parents. Yeah. And James, the father, tries to stall Voldemort, and Voldemort kills him, like, very easily. Voldemort then tries to kill Harry, but Lily stands in the way, uh, and uh, Voldemort says, Lily, get out of the way, I I gotta kill your son. And then Lily's like... So this is another sort of interesting question. It's like, why doesn't Voldemort just kill her like he killed James? I mean, he was was trying... I I feel like he was trying to do what Snape had asked him to do, because he, right that's what I was thinking. It's like it's like well, I, one of my most loyal servants yes. will be ha- all yes. I need to do is kill the kid, I, yes. and if I keep Lily alive, then yes. I'm fine, you know. So so that was, but they didn't really explicitly say and, that. And and it's interesting because at the time, he wasn't yet as monstrous as he was to become. Voldemort. Yeah, and he hadn't actually yet. In fact, if I'm not wrong, I I believe Harry was only like the second Horcrux or third. Like he was, he was not yet the Voldemort that was the full beast. So then Lily casts some spell that says that if she sacrifices her life, then it'll it'll. She didn't cast a spell. She just gave her life up to save her son, and that magic of love. Uh, made it so that it put a, a charm. protective charm on Harry. And then Voldemort tries to kill Harry. And that yeah. And it backfires and, and almost kills Voldemort. And as far as anyone knows, kills Voldemort, but he, he lived. And and by the way, the reason he lived is because of the Horcrux stuff. Like if, if he didn't have Horcruxes and if, in fact, Harry hadn't so become I don't, a Horcrux. Can you explain the Horcrux? Yeah, thing? so there's this super, 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 super dark magic, which is that if you kill someone in just the right way and with a very important object around or something like this, part of your essence can go into that object. So it requires that you murder someone. Part of your essence? Part of your essence, the person doing the killing. Why would you want to do that? Because it, when you do it, um, it has one very, very big side effect, negative side effect, which is that your essence starts getting diluted and you become more and more monstrous. But the pl- the positive is that if they kill your body, they still haven't fully killed you because you still have part of you in these other objects. Uh, this is him living forever. That's part of how he wanted to live forever. So I listen to all the audiobooks, and this is the first time that I've understood and watched the movies, by the way. The, I don't is know there if, something wrong with me that no, I, did? I don't know if the movies make it clear enough, but I remember, I I mean I read those two books twice I think, and you know is it is it possible that I was paying you know close enough attention to the books and the movies, 
and have the whole Horcrux thing go over my head. Yes. And and yet the Horcrux thing was the whole six and seven book. Yes, right? but I think that the way the movies play out, you sort there's a lot of detail you don't have to understand in order to enjoy those movies. I still, but the whole, they're searching for the Horcruxes yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And, and I just remember being like, what are the, what the fuck are the Horcruxes? Yeah. And like, and like and, midway through book seven, they still don't even know where, they still don't even know what all the Horcruxes were. And I'm even like, well, how are they going to wrap this up? Right. And anyway. Well, and, and, but that's just it, that if, if you're trying to eliminate, you know, imagine it's Hitler, right? And we're like, we got to get rid of Hitler. And, and you're told yeah, here's the catch. He's put part of his essence in six other or seven other objects around the world, and if even if you kill three of them, there's still the other four. Which is great, but why seven? It's so cumbersome. He like was. It, it would have been a. Be- I think a better plot if it was like one or two or three. But but <laughs> well, <laughs> seven because because like can you name the seven Horcruxes? Uh, no. But Nagini, Harry, uh, the. Um, Oh man, the one of the uh, the items from the house. Um, I think the Slytherin. But do you know what I mean? Slytherin it's like cup. it's like it it it, um, it got it, not only did the Horcrux concept go over my head, but then I lost track of all. Anyway, yeah, no, you're right. But the reason there were seven is because I don't think anyone in history had ever done that. All the stories he had read, it's like people had done it like once, and he was trying to go for broke. Okay. <laughs> So then, uh, so so Lily dies. James is dead, and Harry lives. Voldemort is gone and dead, as far as anyone knows. There's a diary. The diary was one of them too. Oh, okay. In in Chamber of Secrets. Okay. The Tom. Yeah. Um, Tom Riddle. Riddle. Uh, Snape is first on the scene to save Lily. Did he? Is that why he arrived at the house? Um, or just to see what happened or something? Wait, when, when are we talking about? So after the dust settles, Harry is still alive. Oh, yeah. The yeah, parents right. are dead. Snape is the first one to enter the house. Oh, is he? I didn't remember that. Yeah, or at least in the movies anyway. I don't okay. know. I'm pretty sure in the books And too. he finds Lily dead. Yeah, and he is devastated and yeah. he holds her and he's crying. And Oh, now I remember this. You're right. Just you're a right. massive amount of grief yeah. for the Snapester. Okay. Um, well, and and... I think in that moment, that is the irre- irreversible turning point in which he will never be able to be loyal to Voldemort. If he was ever on the teeter- teetering edge of it, that was it. Like, he would have never been able to be loyal to Voldemort. So he had to, for then on, the rest of his life became essentially like, well, I will be a triple, or a double, you know, I will be against Voldemort till my dying days. Yeah, so now we have another psychological incident where you're you're in Snape's shoes, okay? Right. Again, you you've grown up a loner. No one has liked you. You've tried to get people to like you. The only person that's liked you is Lily. She dumped you and married and had a kid with your mortal enemy, yep. someone who was legitimately a bad person. Yep. And that's pretty messed up, but you still have just a a you know a place in your heart because you don't have anyone else for this person, Lily. Then you're you go to the dark side and you have to be a little conflicted, right? Because oh, yeah. he's not evil. He's you know he's only going there partially because he he's just trying to find a group of friends, right? To, and also people who appreciate him, and also maybe to get some power so he can so he can protect himself against bullies like James and his yep. and his crew. And then that sort of leads down a road, and then you're like, okay, I, I told I told Voldemort about this prophecy. You know, Snape's not a murderer, but he's no. like kind of an accessory to murder at yeah. this point, and he so he's not. I'm sure he's not quite so happy about that. And then he finds out that the the murder the murder victim <laughs> is going to be Lily herself. Yeah, and then he does everything he can to completely, uh, you know, prost himself yeah. for Voldemort. That doesn't work. Then he goes to his mortal enemy, Dumbledore, you know, mm-hmm. another person that's on James' side. He's, you know, Dumbledore's on the on that other side. Yeah. You know, and completely humiliates himself and and begs and does, you know, and hands himself over in a in a very humiliating, emasculating way. And and all of that doesn't do anything. Lily still dies. Yeah. And not only is Lily dead, but Voldemort's now gone. <laughs> And like your entire, you know, like side of the fence is now falling apart. 
Oh, and and by the way, um, Voldemort or sorry, Snape thinks it was Sirius Black who betrayed them, which explains why he hated Sirius. So oh, much. interesting. And so he is now the reason why Lily not so. Not only did Lily, so he's blaming himself for everything. Not only did Lily leave him in the first place because he struck out in anger against her. So he, he's beating himself up about that. Why did I call her a mudblood? Why did yeah. I do that? You know, there's something, why, you know, it's my fault. Right. I, if I hadn't have said that, I might have married her, you know? Yeah. Uh, and not only is he torn up about that, but now she's dead because he yeah. fed Voldemort the information. Uh, it's his fault yes. that she is dead. It's and, a wonder he lived with himself. After. And he's <laughs> standing over, and then well, and then he goes to Dumbledore, and he's just like, "Well, I guess that's it for me. I, I'll yeah. I'll kill myself." Yeah. And Dumbledore's like, "No, you won't. Yeah. If you really loved Lily, you know what your job is now. Yeah. You have to protect Harry." Yeah. Well, which sucks because. Um, that's one thing that Dumbledore didn't tell Snape is why he had to protect Harry. You know, he sort of sold it as like that's that's Lily's child, right? right. So, <laughs> so then, because 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 Dumbledore knows that he's a he's a Horcrux, right? He suspects. He doesn't know for okay. sure. But but he his the long con plan that Dumbledore's playing is that he believes Voldemort split himself up into all these various things. He thinks the snake is one of them. He thinks. If if Voldemort really believes this prophecy, he's gonna come back. He's gonna try to finish the job. All these things, blah blah blah. And anyways, the point is that he is, in fact, sort of using Harry as part of the pawn in his game. He doesn't tell Snape all of this, but he sort of sells it as like, "Hey, this is Lily's child. We must protect them because Voldemort's gonna try to kill him." Right. So the third betrayal is, or the third <laughs> horrible thing that happens to Snape is when Dumbledore tells Snape about this in the yeah. end. And he's like, so I, I need you, uh, we need to set up a situation so that Voldemort kills Harry. Yeah. Because that will actually <laughs> yeah. help it's us. like, what? <laughs> and then Snape's like, wait a second. So I was only trying to protect Harry this whole time so that- so you kill him. <laughs> so that you would eventually kill him. Like, yeah. and, and you never told me. Right. Like, you're just, but you're a trick. You're just another bully yeah. who lies and I, you know, I legitimately love this kid because he's because he has Lily's eyes and you know blah 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 blah. Well, no, he he doesn't. To be fair, he he doesn't love Harry. Well, he, he it, loves part of him, <laughs> but but part of him has a attachment to keeping Harry alive. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that, and I don't remember if this was in the books or the movie or both, but because you wonder. For most of the books, I assumed that the reason Snape ha hated Harry so much was sort of a writing convenience. Right. Why does Snape hate him so much? Right. And then you find out, oh, he got bullied by his dad. But even then, you're like, all right, okay, I could see, but but it's a kid. I mean, at some point, don't you go like, well, yeah, he looks, he reminds me of that asshole, but okay, whatever. But the the thing is, Lily died to save Harry. Right. And so, in some extent, Snape's like, she saved you. This is what she died for. Yeah. And he looked at Harry with disappointment, right? Right. So, well, every time... So every, so Harry comes to Hogwarts later yeah. on, and it's like the amount of emotion yeah. that Snape feels when he sees Harry. Yes, and he's a celebrity. Right. And just everything about this is just so And it's in, he's in Gryffindor. He looks like his dad. Lily died to save him. He doesn't do well in classes. He seems a little bit bratty. Well, well that's he the seems... other, right. So that's another thing is that Harry, it, he, um, you know, Snape is tasked by Dumbledore and also for his love for Lily about keeping Harry alive. Yeah. And one of the ways that Harry is going to stay alive is if he pays attention in class and, yeah. and learns things. Right. And Harry isn't as good as Hermione, right? Nowhere near. <laughs> and, and so he gets upset sometimes because he right. wants Harry to be more studious right. because he's because he cares. But Snape, because he's never had social skills, it comes out all wrong yeah. the way it always has. Mm -hmm. And so, so he um, is... Uh, so this is another part of complicated grief in that when we have someone who dies, 
that's close to us. And, you know, everyone's ran into this, is like someone close to you dies and you're devastated, you know? So, so you're Snape, you're devastated. And then at some point, something will happen where you'll either not be thinking about the grief anymore. Like it won't, it won't be the first thing that enters your head when you have time to think and, and, or something funny happens and you laugh. Most people will be like, Oh, I'm laughing. (laughs) Like, do like, I'm not supposed to be laughing. Right. I don't deserve to laugh. Right. Uh, Does laughing, is that, is that demeaning of the memory of the, of the loved one? Am I being disrespectful? Do I do I deserve to be happy? Okay, right. so you're Snape. You're like I don't deserve to be happy. It's like being at a funeral of, of a loved one or relative and just laughing, and laughing. Right. It, 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 if it's particularly difficult and and Snape has no one to talk to, he can't talk to anybody. Right. I guess he can only talk to Dumbledore, and Dumbledore isn't always available, and and he has a policy about keeping things right. close. And, and by the way, um, and this I actually didn't realize. Uh, or I don't remember having thought of this angle, but today when I was catching up a little bit on the, uh, just to remind myself, someone I, someone had pointed this out. Snape also had to pretend the whole time because what happens is, imagine Voldemort comes back and any one of his spies, including Malfoy, because Lucius is super influential amongst the, the Death Eaters and his son is at Hogwarts, right? Imagine the word gets back that like, I think Snape's actually on Dumbledore's side because he right. tends to be nice to Harry. He tends to, it's over. Right. The, the, the whole effort is done. Right. So he, on top of everything else, he actually has to pretend whether he really feels, I'm sure he does have all these resemblances. On top of everything else, he actually has to pretend to be evil. Right, right. And uh, this is something that maybe she didn't intend fully to write it th- this way because I do think even though she actually had the arc pretty well written out and she actually did a lot of back work before she even wrote the first book, at the same time, the first book, there's a lot of things in there that you that are written conveniently so that the first book works. Right. But but so whether it was intentional or unintentional, in the end, it's got a plausible explanation. Right. That's why <laughs> after researching for this episode, I finally like totally appreciate Rowling's writing because yeah. like... <laughs> If you just pay attention, if you're nerdy about it enough, yeah. then there are some very poetic things that happen very early on. You know, right. from the from the first uh, class of the potions that Harry goes to, and right. Snape is a total dick to Harry. You're like, you know, I now want to read the books again because I because I want to like if you understand the backstory, yeah, it all makes total sense. And by the way, it's not the kind of thing like in Lo- Lord of the Rings where. Well, of course they couldn't use the eagles at this other time because if you read Silmarillion, page right. six thousand and fifty, right. I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so there's it, throughout the books, Snape protects Harry and his friends, like from Lupin when he turns into a werewolf, and he, you know, but he also like there's other times where he's super, he's pretty much mean to Harry throughout all the books. Um, Snape helps the good guys. He's in the Order of the Phoenix, but then. You know, some red herrings happen where it's like, wait, he has the the mark of the death the eater, mark. and you know, yeah. <laughs> and you know, and and then he um, attacked one of the one of the Weasley brothers when they were trying to get he to cuts Hogwarts. His ear. Yeah, but that was an accident yes. apparently. <laughs> and then you have like this Snape Sirius Black, uh, you know, feud going on. But again, all that makes sense because Sirius Black was a total asshole to Snape. Yep, <laughs> and and Sirius. Black thought that, or and Snape thought that Sirius was the one who betrayed to find yeah, out where yeah. the Potter house was. So and, basically, other than Voldemort, Sirius Black was probably the second person in Snape's kill list. Right, and, and James too. You know, well, but James, James had even it, you know like. I feel like Snape had had gotten to the point where he would hate uh, James forever, but it's not someone he would have wanted to kill. No, no. Versus, no. he would have wanted to kill Sirius because he he it was his betrayal that led to Lily's. Right. You know. Then, as you talked about, Narcissa Malfoy gives Snape the unbreakable vow that Is says it Narcissa or Bellatrix. Is it Narcissa? 
Narcissa. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, right, right, right. Because it's uh, right. She's related to Draco, and she wants Draco protected. She is Narcissa Draco's mom. I don't know. I think it's Draco's mom. Yeah. So uh, she's like, yeah, I want my son protected. So you got to make this unbreakable vow. Right. So yeah. so now you're Snape, and you're like, well, if I refuse, then I I look like I'm like I'm right. a, like I'm a double agent or a triple agent. And right. so I guess I got to do it. And, and, and this is when Harry witnesses it, I think, right? And I want to reread these now. And I, this is getting me excited. <laughs> right. So the, and the vow is to protect Draco, to help him complete uh, Voldemort's task, which yeah. is to kill, uh, you know, Dumbledore. And if Draco can't do it, then Snape has to f- complete it himself. And if you break an unbreakable vow, you die. Right. <laughs> And so Snape becomes the dark arts professor and he uses the dark arts to save Dumbledore from the gaunt ring. And it, and this is when it's revealed that Dumbledore is going to die soon anyway. Right. And, and so it doesn't really matter. Well, we don't find that out till later, till later, uh, but maybe that, even the very end of yeah, the seventh book. But, but, uh, there was some hint cause his hand was withering yeah. away. Right. So it's, it's interesting. It's like, Dumbledore would have died anyway. Yeah. Uh, Snape needed to kill, you know, either Draco had to kill yeah. Dumbledore or Snape had to kill him. Yeah. And and Snape's like, well, it'll look better if I do it because then then Voldemort will really trust but me. I think, I think um, Gandalf, <laughs> I think uh, Dumbledore... Uh, says something about Draco's soul. Like right. he doesn't want Draco. And, and Dumbledore's uh, like, dude, you got to kill me. Like Draco, he's, he's a kid. He, still. Yeah, he's still a kid and yeah. he's salvageable. And he's got to finish his finals because he hasn't graduated yet. <laughs> right, that was a whole other thing. It's like throughout the books, even up till like book six, they're, they're still playing fucking Quidditch. You know, and like, and like Snape uh, gives... Harry detention so he can't play on the Quidditch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, really? Like after book four, I feel like they should have just completely done away like, with. Dude, with it's it's too risky to be at school. And they sort of do, right? Like in in book five, he like he's not at school all year, right? Like I mean, he he's he's um and in book six, he goes on these long quests with Dumbledore. <laughs> But he, but they, but they're still like <laughs> they're still at total normal thing, yeah. and everyone still thinks Harry's a dick. You know, <laughs> the, the other funny thing is that they often say like, you know, Hogwarts is like the safest place, but all the bad shit happens at Hogwarts. <laughs> um, so uh, Harry hurts Draco in a fight using the Half Blood Prince uh, spells that he's reading, which is really Snape's book, right? Yeah. Um, and Snape gives Harry detention during the final Quidditch match. It, it's the what, uh, what's the uh, slashing spell? Pe- pe- uh, I don't remember. Uh, uh, Dumbledore tells Snape that da da da. So we've already gone over that. Uh, Draco tries to kill Dumbledore. Snape kills Dumbledore himself. Harry attacks Snape. And this is an interesting scene t- here too, because at this point you're like, oh, Snape is evil because yeah. he just killed Dumbledore. I mean, is that what you thought? No, I I, I mean, but it was. It, remember, at this point, I've already been the whole time second guessing everything, and I'm realizing, well, look, he had no choice because of the unbreakable vow. So yeah, well, the way that Rowling writes, it's like, well, who knows? At the end of book seven, there's there could be a twist, and there was. And I was certainly, I was certainly in shock. Like, did they really kill Dumbledore? Yeah. And then I was like, well, no, I remember no, after Snape book six, be good. Snape has got to be good. I remember. After book six, everyone was like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. Because book six comes out, everyone's in line for overnight, right? Yeah. And then everyone runs home and instantly reads the book, right? Yeah. And then within like eight hours, people are tweet- tears. tweeting about it and Facebooking about it and stuff or right. whatever we had back in, well, I guess it would have been like 2005. <laughs> I don't think we had any of that stuff. We had tweets maybe. No. Well, anyway, we had, but people talked about it, whatever, however people communicated in 2005. How did they communicate? Uh, MySpace. <laughs> MySpace. Yeah. They were MySpace. They were friendstering. Um, they were kazaing it. <laughs> And people were like, oh my God. And I remember there's all this talk about like, about like, um, Jon Snow, is he really dead? Right. Maybe he'll come back. 
right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, people are like, well, no, G- Gandalf. I keep wanting to say, he's not really dead, like, right. because of this. And, and there were tons of theories, I remember. But me, I, I was convinced he was dead. It's just that I, sl- I both held hope slash had my little theories that, S- that Snape was good and that this was somehow, like, on purpose. Let's take a break, and when we get back, let's talk about the end of Snape's life. All right, we're back from the break. Let's, let's continue the story here. So then Voldemort kills Snape because he thinks he will... He thinks he needs to. Well, so he believes that uh, Snape controls the Elder Wand. And Voldemort's trying to get control of the Elder Wand because it's the most powerful wand. Right. This will. Why does he think Snape? Because he thought that Snape killed Dumbledore and Dumbledore. Well, sorry. Snape did kill Dumbledore. He thought Dumbledore controlled the Elder Wand when Snape killed Dumbledore. And therefore, Snape now controls the Elder Wand. But what he doesn't know is that. I think Harry did a, a Expelliarmus on Snape, and because he did that, Harry now controls the Elder Wand. Oh. Something along those lines. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So the the point is, Voldemort thinks Snape controls the Elder Wand. If I kill him, I will control the Elder Wand. See, that was a whole other thing that went over my head. So the Elder Wand isn't an actual wand. It is. Oh, it is a wand. It is a wand. Yeah. So he took Snape's wand. He uh, so the the Elder Wand belong. It was part of the whole. There was this whole uh, story. Remember with the little circle and the triangle and the stuff. Yeah. But um, it was given to uh, Dumbledore by uh, what's his name? Guy, g- starts with a G. Uh, Grindelwald. Grindelwald. So the the Elder Wand was Grindelwald's wand, I believe, and he gave it to uh, to Dumbledore. Okay, so now Dumbledore is in possession of the Elder Wand. Okay. But Snape kills Dumbledore. And when you kill someone, you can take possession of their wand. Okay. Apparently, also, if you expelliarmus someone, you can take possession of their wand, apparently, if I remember this right, or something along those lines. So, so, so well, as wouldn't far as- Voldemort be able to just look at the wand and go like, well, that's not the elder wand. That's, that's your rusty old wand you always have. I don't remember that part of the scene. I don't know if he's holding it. I don't know if it doesn't matter if he's holding it or not holding it. I don't remember. Okay. But what I do know is Harry was the one that really controlled the Elder Wand. Why doesn't he just ask for the Elder Wand from Snape? Because you can ask for it, but if you if you don't control it, you can't use it. And you have to kill them? To... You have to do either kill or expel the arm. I can't remember. Do you know what I mean? I know, I know. But listen. I So, so, so while we're on this line... <laughs> It makes sense when you read it. I just don't remember the details. But what I do know is Voldemort thinks that Snape's got it. But th- so this is just another <laughs> convoluted thing about the story. It's just like it's too complicated. <laughs> you know, because to extend not. this, to extend this, like, why did Harry beat Voldemort in the end? So, so Voldemort kills Harry. Killing Harry ex- re- removed the last bit of Voldemort that was protected by Horcruxes. So now the only thing left of Voldemort was his body. And that made it possible to kill that one and be done with it. Now, why Harry was brought back is because of love, but it's a little bit of... They did a little bit of Deus Ex Machina there, but they, they she explains it. It's just, you know, maybe a braver story would have had Harry fully die, you know, but whatever. I liked that he came back personally because it was nice. It's and then who actually Disney. killed Voldemort in the end? Um, well, I think Harry kills him by... or Yeah, doesn't... Isn't it like... <laughs> Do you know what no, I but mean? It's been a long time. Look, I, it's been a long time. Yeah, but who cut off Luke Skywalker's hand? Uh, Princess Leia. And, and who killed the Emperor? This is not fair. Listen, these are only three movies, and I saw them a billion times each. But do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, no, these it's are not fair. Who killed Voldemort? You I've only seen movie the seventh movie. I'm just saying, like, I think I've only look, seen it in the theaters once. Look, maybe if we looked into it, it would make sense. But the question of who killed Voldemort? No, I'm pretty sure it's Harry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Harry. <laughs> okay, you're right. It should be obvious. But also realize that the fact that we can't answer it is going to be used against us in a court of internet. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I feel like we've been pretty good up to this point. Well, yeah, but look, look, look. What I'm trying to say is the reason I can't quite remember is because, and I guess this goes to your point, there's a lot that happens in that last battle. 
But that one <laughs> question should be pretty easy well, to me, answer. Let me see. Like so, so Voldemort kills Harry, and Harry goes to like Harry goes to after, this limbo place. Yeah. And his parents are his there. His parents are there. But love brings him back because of the thing that they had caught. Remember, there was the little ball with the the thingy, that Dumbledore with the quid the snitchy thing, the gold. No. There's all this stuff that magic. It's magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and then Then Harry walks wakes up and kills him? <laughs> anyway. So Voldemort um, so Voldemort before this point kills Snape. Because he wants to be, you know, the elder, he wants the elder one, and he has his snake bite Snape through the neck, which is pretty gnarly. Hold on, and well, let's yeah, yeah, go okay. through it. Okay, okay. Harry, Harry sees the whole thing. Harry runs to Snape's side as he's dying, and this is when Harry, you know, really realizes: wait, Snape's been good this whole time. Snape's been good, or or Snape's a good guy. He's the bravest soul. Well, warrior. then, then. Uh, Snape tells Harry to look in the book Harry says or Snape says look at me look at me because he wants to see the green eyes the green lily eyes which in the movie does he does he do that yeah okay and Snape cries and then Harry he collects his tears yeah. and then after Snape dies he goes and sees the memories and he learns the whole backstory the whole enchilada and this is when we learn the whole backstory yeah. of Snape and we learn that he was plagued with mixed feelings about Harry and his father, and that he's... It is the epic Scooby-Doo of all Scooby-Doos. And he's jealous <laughs> and angry, and, you know, and we learn finally that Snape is a, an incredibly vulnerable, suffering, grieving, lonely, guilty, low self-esteemed human being. And when you see it from that perspective, it all makes sense. I mean, the way that Alan Rickman pulls it off, and, and I guess the vision in your mind that Rowling sort of portrays, is that it's right on the line between, is he a sadistic, unfeeling asshole? Or is he, so, is he suffering so much that he's just holding it all in? And I think what we realize in the end is it's the latter. You know, Snape was suffering so greatly and he was so racked with guilt and, and to some extent suicidal because of how bad he felt about everything and so put upon by bullies and society. And, you know, he, he was bullied by the muggle world. He was bullied by the wizarding world. Uh, he falls in love with this girl. She dumps him for the bully. Then, you know, he... Just trying his best and he causes Lily's death and then Dumbledore uses him as a pawn and his you know and Dumbledore by the you know by the end of the books is like his mentor his his you know maybe the only other person you know he went from uh, maybe I, I have my mom and then he goes to Lily and then he goes to Dumbledore and then Dumbledore also kind of betrays him and then he makes Snape kill him I mean imagine what we haven't even talked about that yeah Imagine if I told you you have to shoot me in the head with a gun. Yeah. To and, and you're and you have no choice. Right. And there's no money involved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and you know that's got to screw you up. Right. And even because even if you're like, dude, I'm dying. I've got some terminal disease. I, that's not. That only makes it. I'm not. I don't know if it makes it harder, but it's sort of like, wait. First of all, I'm trying to process the fact that you just told me that you're gonna die. Yeah. Now you're asking me to kill you. Yeah. Like in in a violent. I, like oh like, my god! Uh, yeah, I'm gonna be awake. No, and, no, no, and I'm no, gonna no, see no, it coming. Ridiculous. Yeah. Now, um, that's got. That's got. I, I think I just remembered, sort of. So, he, so Harry gets killed by Voldemort, eliminating the last Horcrux he could have uh, held, held on to. Right? Did Harry know he was a Horcrux at this? At point? that point, I think he had figured it out. Right? So Harry knows he has to die. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So then, but he's got that little. I forget what it is. It's like a little golden -y thing. There's something that protects him. So he dies, goes to a little funny place. But he comes back, and then they don't they do the thing with the wands where he attacks, and then the wands do the thing, and then all the people that Voldemort killed come back and overwhelm him, and that's oh. how he dies. Oh yeah, yeah, right. That's because love ultimately. This was the thing that Voldemort never understood is the power of love and blah blah blah. So something along those lines. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Years later, Harry names his second son Albus Severus after Dumbledore and Snape. 
and he, uh, the kid grows up and is about to enter Hogwarts, Harry's kid, and this and Albus Severus Potter is worried that he's going to be sorted into Slytherin. He's like, oh no, am I going to get into Slytherin? I want to be in Gryffindor. <laughs> and Harry tells his son, you were named for two headmasters of Hogwarts. One of them was a Slytherin, and he was probably the bravest man I ever knew. Yeah. By the way, uh, one gripe I did have was that they always kept Slytherin house around, and they all pretended, like I meaning the headmaster, everyone pretended like, doo, 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 it's fair, it's a fair system, right? But it was so not fair. You have one mean house, and the other three houses having to deal with this one mean house at all times. The Slytherin headmaster was always mean to everyone else and unfair to everyone else. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, while going down this research rabbit hole today, there's a YouTube video that explains the origin story of yeah. of the different ho- of of Hogwarts itself right. and it, you know there were two guys and two women yeah and, you know and the two and one of the Salazar guys Salazar Slytherin yeah. yeah and he was a horrible human being let's he, see he, Salazar he, Slytherin Rowena Ravenclaw uh Griffin Godric Gryffindor and something Hufflepuff <laughs> yeah and and the Snape guy was kind of like the first Voldemort in some ways, right? Uh, uh, Salazar. Slytherin, you mean? Yeah, the, or the first Slytherin. Sal- Salazar, sorry, Slytherin. The, yeah, the first Slytherin. He wasn't yeah. evil, though. No, the thing is, he wasn't he was about He was about purity. He was and... about purity. But th- th- you know what it feels like to me? Sort of like our current, you know, situation a little bit where we have to keep up appearances that like, well, today the president said something a little disturbing. or Like in a similar way, you have this situation where it's like, Oh, I could imagine they should do a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern type thing behind the scenes where we see it from different, from like headmaster or like different professors perspective where they're in the break room and they're like, okay, how long are we going to sit here and pretend that this is normal? Slytherin house is just insulting everyone. Their little brat kids in that house are always bullying everyone. Right. And everyone the, pretends this is balanced. Was there, <laughs> was there any nice person in Slytherin? Not the way that we looked at it. Oh, I mean, there, there was a... Uh, there were a couple of gray zone ones, but for the most part, they were the bullies. They were the mean ones. Well, the thing <laughs> the thing that I always sort of got was Dumbledore's perspective on that, which was a kind of meta wise perspective around the bigger picture, which was like, if you ask Dumbledore, like, why is slithering still a thing? He'd be like, well, you know, you need all types of people. But but no, right? But I and feel, and, and yeah. they're not they're not evil. They're just they're just you know they're. Nah. I, 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 I so here, here's what what I'm what I'm saying is, if it were written a little more subtly, like it was just an adult movie with these themes, um, I could see, and I don't mean that in that way. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure there is a porn. <laughs> what I mean a is Hogwarts, Harry. What would oh it be gosh. called? Harry Potter and the and the Chamber of Dildos. Harry Plopper and listen, um, what I'm trying to say is that. I could definitely see the perspective of the yin-yang thing where they say, look, in fact, I think Dumbledore says this, right? He says, look, what happens is Slytherin are, are reckless, and, but they are also, they are also uh, brave, and they do these things. So they say... Um, right, so was it They Snape, break rules a bit, but they... So Snape, for example, was Slytherin, right. and he was the key to the whole story. Right, and Harry Potter was partially... He was inclined towards that side as well because of his Voldemort part of him innards yeah but so that's fine but the way it plays out is a kid's story meaning right, right. slytherin is pretty much the bad guys <laughs> right that, that's that's the whole thing like yeah. we always have to remember that it's these, a kid's story. <laughs> these are kids stories that are and we're not talking like like you could argue star wars is a kid story no no uh harry po- the first harry potter book is written, is a kid's is written for 10 year olds yeah. like, and it was um so that to its credit how how amazing it could inspire so many adults having been written for for kids that were really kids right yeah 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 exactly <laughs> so so in that way i mean you know rowling really pulled something off and again doing research for this episode i have i have a total new appreciation for the whole story <laughs> Do you realize because it, it 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 all, not only did it make sense to me but I really have an appreciation for the way that she wrote Snape's character. Yeah, dude. What a classic character in literature now. 
because such an arc and so many strong reasons to explain why and how and everything. And everything kind of comes back it to it. It does. Him. Now, I will say, I'm, I'm thinking back to, uh, if, if people are listening to this episode and they're true fans, can you imagine? We should almost ship like medicine of some sort, penicillin or something, because their heads are going to explode when we got to the point in this podcast where we didn't know how the hell Voldemort died or who killed him. They're going to be like, unsubscribe, <laughs> unpatronize, you're done. <laughs> Luckily, they won't hear this part because I'll tell them, I love you guys. <laughs> no, but in all fairness, it's we do this because we love the material. We're not experts in the material. Yeah. We just love this stuff. I mean... I, I will, yeah, I can totally empathize with that. I, I listen to podcasts where they talk about pop culture. Yeah. And it's really hard for me to listen to people when they're talking about things that I love. And not only do they not really understand it, yeah. but, but they're also trashing on it. Like, if what was I listening to recently? Um, oh, I can't remember. It was some, listening to something, they were talking about some movie that came out recently and it was a it was a movie that I liked. I mean, I, I remember thinking I, I didn't love the movie, but, but I remember. And maybe it was the new the new Star Wars movie. I don't uh -huh. know. But they were talking about it like they barely understood it. They're like, so how many Star Wars? You know, for example, how many stars are there? Yeah, how many how many Star Wars movies were there? And like how you know and who it, killed Voldemort? Yeah, <laughs> who you know wasn't there a Darth Vader character in another movie? I don't get it. And it's like. It's really hard to listen to yeah, yeah. that. It'd be one thing if they're just like, "Yeah, I really liked it," and but I don't really, you know. But it's another thing when they're when they trash on something and they don't be, because <laughs> they they haven't spent enough time with Dude, it. I, many years ago, I, I think I told this one before, but I have a friend who we went to watch Heat, the movie Heat. Do you remember Heat? I love that movie. Yeah, and that that holds up. <laughs> and we're leaving the theater, and like, what'd you think? Ah, uh, it's all right. I didn't like it so much. I'm like, what? How did you? Why did you? And then it's like, well, this this didn't this didn't make sense. Why did Val Kilmer say such and such? I'm like, oh, what do you mean? Because of this other thing that they clearly said, and then this other thing happened. Oh, I was asleep during that part. <laughs> what? So they they were blaming plot holes and things they didn't understand because they, they had fallen asleep. Right, which is essentially what I was doing because I wasn't really paying attention that's fair, to, to yeah. the audiobook. <laughs> but I'm saying like, and, and if you want to claim it was boring so I fell asleep, that's fine. Right. But don't poke holes at things you weren't watching. Right. Like that's not fair. <laughs> but I, I think it is a legitimate, I still think it's, I mean, because you're you've been super into the books and into the yeah. movies. Yeah. And for me to just throw out a question which... You know how yes, how did fair. how did Voldemort die? And now, granted, you're not as a super nerd as people perhaps listen, or it's not recent. Like at the time, I probably would have listed out the whole scene, but but it didn't you, stick with you. You make a really good point, which is that, and partially it's because it is a seven book series, and those last books are massive. Think about that, yeah. kids' books. Yeah. And they're massive. Yeah. Sure. And way more readable. Like, how, like a thousand pages or something? Yeah. Yeah. And yet way more readable than the Lord of the Rings ones. Yeah. So I will say... God, the Lord of the Rings books. I will say you make a great point in that if you ask me, or if you ask anyone that's seen Star Wars once or twice about or, major plot points... Or Lord of the Rings. I mean, like, you know, they're, it, like the, the climax of the, of the movie, like, how does Sauron die? Birdo, how does Sauron die? The ring, the ring burns what? in the fire. Right, the ring goes into the. No, volcano. no, no. But see, I, but I would, I was thinking you were going to use Lord of the Rings as a also another example of complicated. There, there are, stuff. but but of the key moments, how does Sauron die? Okay, Frodo, the ring burns in the fire. The ring goes into the, you know, you know. I see what you're saying. It wasn't the sword of Gryffindor stabbed Voldemort through the heart. Which, by the way, it might have been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it, and I remember when I I remember when I read the books and saw the movies. I remember being like, "Man, you know, that was such a." I remember being disappointed by the ending because I was like, "It would have been so much cooler. It would have been so much cooler and so much simpler if they had had if I was if I was writing the books, <laughs> yeah. I would have had maybe 
either three Horcruxes or maybe just one Horcrux. Well, and, it, and, it, yeah. and the only Horcrux was Harry Potter. Right. And Voldemort doesn't know that. And somehow Harry Potter and his crew trick Voldemort into believing the Horcrux is something else. Okay. Yeah. And then, and forget about the Elder One. Like that whole thing is just a red, like who, who cares about the Elder One? You know, that doesn't really matter. Right. And you just sort of make it so that Voldemort is dead set on getting this one item and he's, and he hates Harry Potter and wants to kill him. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, um, you would have had a few less billion dollars as a result. I know. And right now you just finally nailed the nails in the coffin of this episode. <laughs> cause you basically said, but, 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 but cause I remember, well, cause I was into it enough in 2006, just before the fourth, the seventh book came out. I remember being enough into it yeah. at the time where I would speculate with you probably yeah. and other people about like how this was going to end. And I remember really hoping that the way it was going to end was that Harry was going to die. Yeah. And and I remember everyone saying like, well, Harry has to die. Like yeah. that that just has cuz you know, that has that just has to be the way it's ended. Yeah. And then, you know, he kills Harry or Harry sacrifices himself yeah. to save someone else. Oh, no, to save everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and Harry dies, boom, you know, Voldemort explodes. Yeah. And every and then everyone cries. Yeah. And then they do a memorial and then Hermione teaches at the school yeah. and, and and they remember Harry fondly. Yeah. But but they but they did more of the Jesus arc, right? He, Harry had the worst everything and then he dies and came back. <laughs> <laughs> now I will say, so you so I don't disagree with you that in the end it is a complex puzzle, right? But it was that kind of story. Right. It was that kind of story. No, you're right. It, it, it was very consistent of Rowling yeah. to have a very complicated ending yeah. to a book in a series of books yes. with very complicated yes. endings. And so you are right to point that, like, uh, and, and it's funny because I would have thought of Lord of the Rings in the opposite way, but you're right that when it came to how did the bad guy get defeated, oh, they dropped a little piece of gold ring into a lava pit. That's which, simple. <laughs> which they established <laughs> from the beginning, yes. Like in chapter three yeah, yeah. of the first book. And that's fair. And so they Gandalf if, says, yeah. this ring has to be yeah. destroyed. So if, like for example, again, this wouldn't have made so many billions. But if for example, in book two or book three, we would have found out um the only thing that can defeat Voldemort is the sword of Gryffindor driven through his heart. But that cannot happen until we find out how he's staying alive. And then we find out it's Harry, then Harry dies, and then stab, and then he dies. Okay, something. Simple. Less billion dollars, but simple. <laughs> Would it have been less billion dollars? I'm just using that as like, look, because she, made, she made a lot of money with this did. complicated story. But but to <laughs> me, I, I wonder how much, how much of the billion dollars was made by the world. Yeah. And, because like, there's a lot of things that go into making something popular. Sure. And story is one of them, but I don't think it, if my evaluation of the because I enjoyed the books, I yeah. enjoyed I the things that I the things that I think made the product that because I, I spent money you know for the yeah. audiobooks um, and the movies, I think the thing that made the product was the world, the look, the the mythology, the the humor, I guess the the interplay between. Hermione and Ron and and Harry, uh, the fact that it was both for kids and adults, the fact that you could kind of nerd out on it, the it had a lot of things in it that I think everyone kind of wants. I think everyone wants to yeah. go to a Hogwarts and be you know put in a house and have an instant bunch of friends that you can play totally games with and 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 I, and I agree with you in in similar way how Star Wars established a universe that we could all get behind. Right. What I will say though is she was she put herself into an impossible situation on how to end that thing. And yet she did pull it off. Right? Because think about it. If she had killed Harry like many of us thought slash maybe secretly hoped or maybe not so secretly hoped, there would have been a whole other wave of of disappointment and anger and betrayal because many people might have wanted Harry to live, right? Uh, another thing is if someone had Avada Kedavra, because remember, the only ways that we know that people die in the story magically, the big way is by the uh, unforgivable Avada Kedavra curse. If someone, if one of our heroes would have had to do that on Voldemort, 
it would have compromised that one's soul. So it, it would have to have been like Snape doing it, but Snape was dead. Or it would have to do Lucius, but Lucius, that would have been so anticlimactic. Malfoy, but then Malfoy's a kid, he also would have compromised his soul. In fact, that's why Dumbledore didn't want him to have, be the one to kill him. You mean Draco? Uh, Draco, so, yeah. So, so the problem is, they had to, she had to find a way for, for Voldemort to die that didn't have one of our heroes actually using the unforgivable curse on Voldemort. And that's why love had to be the way to triumph and blah, blah. But it is complex. I don't disagree. It is complex. Right. It, but I, I totally agree. And, and, I, and, that, and that has bumped it up in my head yeah. that every book in the series had a very convoluted ending. Yeah. <laughs> and... And gave you a sense, you know, like you said, it wasn't like when you're reading the book or saw the movie, you were like, what? Like you, you were, it, it, it transported you along, right? you know, and it led you to those moments and, and then, and it made sense in the moment. Yeah. It was hard to describe later, yeah. but the way she wrote it, 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 it carried you along. Um, but to me, it, I was again, after after book four, I was kind of a reluctant enjoyer of the stories. And so it just, it to, made it hard for me to right. enjoy. You to, know? to be fair, like think of Star Wars, right? It didn't in fact end with Luke Skywalker stabbing the emperor through the heart with his lightsaber. That's that's right. Right. There was more complexity to the ending. Not nearly as much. <laughs> not, <laughs> not nearly as much. But you know. Darth Vader it, just threw him into a hole. Well, but if I ask someone, like, so how did Darth Vader die? Okay, well, he... He was depleted from the exertion and the lightning powers. Well, of that's a, But you see what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't know. The emperor killed Darth Vader. Not directly. As Darth Vader was throwing him into a hole. Not directly, and he didn't die right away. And then, no. But he died redeemed. And like, there's more to the story, right there. So even something as simple as the Star Wars arc didn't just uh, end know. it's pretty trivially. It, it's pretty simple it's pretty simple well, and remember luke skywalker was a horcrux so if he had stuff <laughs> <laughs> i'm just saying like uh and you know that's why i didn't like book two you know because the book two the ending the whole story of book two was convoluted the, you know the other thing no one talks about is anna luke like people don't like to admit that there was a romance between darth vader and luke skywalker and it was brewing all the movies. And people don't like it. <laughs> You're a Luke Vader shipper. I'm a Luke Vader shipper. <laughs> yeah, I, w I will say again, especially in, in you know looking at Snape's character, that it really makes me want to read the books again uh, with this understanding. Yeah. You know, it's like seeing a um, like a movie like Inception again. Or, yeah. You know, movies you watch it again and it or Arrival, for example, right. and and it's like. It's it's more enjoyable the second time because you know you know the whole yeah. story and you're like oh I can see why that's dropped in there and I, that all makes yeah. sense and that imagine if someone did make a movie from Snape's perspective done in sort of a a stylistic way where you know you don't get a whole seven other movies you get like one movie but it's it's watching the whole storyline but from Snape's perspective right. in a condensed way because you get these moments where he's not even in the main scene but he's like what the hell are they doing now like I'm trying to keep this kid and he's talking to himself right. like I'm trying to save this kid oh god damn it right and then he's like talking to Dumbledore like listen man I don't know how much longer I can do this like I have to act like I'm upset the whole time I'm yeah. not this upset I'm not this depressed I, 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 I bet you <laughs> someone's done this but if they haven't they should is someone should write a diary of Snape. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, different diary right. entries throughout his entire life. Right. And it turns out he was never that depressed. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, well, yeah, I liked her, but listen, I'm not obsessed with her. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It'd be so interesting because to, to have these entries of just like, yeah, so... You know, Harry showed up today at, at school, and but that's pretty tough because right. you know she he he looks like James, and he also kind of looks like Lily. So, boy, I got a lot of feelings on the inside. You know, <laughs> dear diary, um, <laughs> complicated grief today. Yeah, <laughs> Harry showed up. <laughs> You know, I, I think it'd be... And then he's like, and I had to cry these fake tears as I was dying so that Harry would think I was a hero the whole time. <laughs> but I'm really Voldemort. <laughs> I was Voldemort the whole time. Because what you don't know is I'm a 15th horse, horse crux. <laughs> All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Thanks oh for joining gosh. us out there. Please take care of yourself because... You deserve it.
So can you can you say it like in a Snape way or something? I could say it in a Dumbledore way, because you deserve it always. <laughs> Isn't there a better sort of way you could say it? I, 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 I want to... Harry Potter must not return to Hogwarts this year. Do it the like... Dobby. Yeah, do it like... Yeah. Okay. Um, you just... Des- no, I can't... Like, that doesn't even work. Um, hey, Harry, you deserve it. It's uh, Hagrid. <laughs> uh, so how does Snape talk? Snape's like... Um, attention... No, I can't do his voice. It's such a... Alan Rickman's so good at this. It's like... You will find that my class is very difficult, but that's not even right. Because? Because you deserve it.